Hello everybody, it's Chris with uh, Click Team, uh, another reactor stream. Today we're going to talk about uh, Weirder Stuff 2, uh, Isolite, which is included in the uh, bundle for this Hello month. And we're going to uh, also try to fix that uh, bug we had in our Space War game last week. So if anyone isn't aware, uh, on the stream, Weirder Stuff 2 started. It's uh, the same Click Jam we did last year with a new theme this year. Uh, and uh, you can jo join up on itch.io right here. Uh, we have 82 people already joined in. You've got until the end of Sunday, midnight, wherever you live, to get your submission in. And for those that are brave enough to uh, submit, uh, you have some awesome prizes you can grab. Uh, Fusion 2 developer, the Android and iOS exporters, Steam or Standalone for the grand prize, which also includes a Weirder Stuff polo shirt, Stranger Things Season 1 DVD, uh, $25 click store credits, and the Weirder Stuff color poster that we uh, made. And uh, that's the poster right there. Pretty good stuff. Nico made it for us. Um, and uh, I have the DVDs right here. They came in today. So you know we're not full of it. Because you never know a click team. Let's take a look. If I can get into the box. If you haven't seen Stranger Things, there's something wrong with you. Uh, so there it is. I got two copies. One for the grand prize winner and uh, one for the runner-up. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, the theme for this year is 80s flavored paranormal. Uh, we have already one entrant uh, post uh, an image of what they're working on on Twitter. Uh, he hashtagged it weirder things too. I want to create in Made with Fusion. And you can see it's his title screen. Uh, very 80s looking with the palm trees and the cassette tapes. I uh, can't wait to see what the paranormal part of the game is. So uh, shout out to Ender there. Thank you. And uh, we'll go ahead and retweet that. Um, in addition to that, uh, we also are running our own games only bundle. For $3.49, you can grab yourself uh, four Made with Fusion games which include uh, Alien Splatter, which we've demonstrated uh, here on the reactor before. Room 13, which is a great uh, game uh, that themed the uh, very Halloween style with uh, a guy who's lost his face and you have to figure out what happened to his face and put on other people's faces to get powers. Uh, VTA, a real-time strategy game, uh, kind of like Master of Orion. And a puzzle favorite of mine, Tiznar Tiles. If you haven't tried any one of these, they're worth the $3.49 alone, but together you can get them all for more than 80% off if you were to pay for them on Steam. And you can find that on uh, the Click Team Click Store. So just type in Weirder Stuff Bundle, or from the front page, you should find it in the uh, first of the latest items. Pretty neat. Now, as you might have known, uh, reactants who've signed up for the reactor, $15 or more have access this month coming up to Isolite. And uh, RPM, Rage Platform and Movement Engine, and I believe it's Dungeon Crawler. Today we're going to take a look at Isolite. So Isolite is a really cool uh, isometric engine that not only functions as an engine, but also has an editor built into it. It's a regular $14.99, so it's alone the price of the membership. It's written by Solar B, a longtime Fusion user, and it's pretty amazing. Um, We'll take a look at the uh, editor here. So this is what the editor looks like. And currently I have it set it to ambient. You can change the ambient lighting. So let's just change it to red. And then I believe you can change the range. And maybe I'm not doing it right. So that's shadows on, shadows off. And then you've got lights, player. So we can put the player here. I got this working last time. Well, help F1 will help us. Save level, load level. Ah, left mouse button place wall, right mouse button removes wall. Adjust height, change tile type. All right, so let's try that. So we'll hide the help. There's, there it goes, there's the height. And it looks like it's set to a lighting source right now. So... If I hit control and scroll, uh, let's go back to help again. Control, mouse wheel, change tile type. 
shift left mouse button. Interesting. So obviously the mouse wheel is controlling the height. And now I've placed a light. And I can change the light color here. And now I'm placing bricks on the screen, which is kind of cool. Let's get another light source. Now we've got two light sources. And we can still set them to red. And if I'm not mistaken, we get shadows working. So let's try to place a brick that would cause a shadow. And so you can see it's casting the shadows, which is pretty cool. So you can edit your world, and I believe you can place the player. Go back to the help. Load level. I wonder if he includes a level. Let's find out. I like this down here too. It kind of shows you what you're placing. So load. Load, save, load. Interesting. So what comes included with it besides the isometric engine is uh, you have the, uh, where did I put it? You got the PDF, some support files, and it comes with this uh, MFA, which we'll take a peek in here in a minute, and I believe a demo. Demo, demo. So I'm assuming that's what we can load. So maybe instead of running it here, we'll run it from Infusion. All right, so load. There you go, and it pulls up the load dialog. And let's go to demo. And I don't know if it loaded. Let's try loading a different one. Pathfind. Interesting. I seem to be lost. Well, the good news is when you lost, get lost, you have this really cool PDF that he created. Setting the plane. Using your own tiles. That's interesting. The engine provides the easiest way to switch between tiles and that you prepare the tile selector window shows the current tile. The active used for display can be modified to reflect the tiles you're using. So I believe that's when we use control in the wheel. So so my wheels aren't... Oh, the look is changing. So... Well, it's a transparent brick versus a solid brick. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I got it wrong. And I believe this guy in the middle represents our player. So F1. So it's WASD to move. Oh, so there he is. He's moving. And there's your jump button. It looks like he's generating his own light source, which is creating the, the shadow engine to manipulate itself. That's pretty cool. This is kind of fun. Let's see if we can jump up there. Okay, so I've now jumped up. Oh. Ah, awesome. Added a new light source. All right, so that's how we do that. Cubes for ground. Splitting your tile, so it shows you how to 
use the built-in engine to create your own tiles. Creating your level of the planes work. And so as we saw when you use the mouse wheel in combination with control, you can uh, lower or heighten the uh, height to get that isometric feel for terrain. Okay, so that's that's cool. So lighting can be changed height too. Let's go back to the engine. So if I go like this, hit control, then I can have a light really high. And let's see if this deletes the light. No, it doesn't. Okay. Change. Okay, so you can decrease and increase the range of the lighting. Okay, ambient cursor player. So the player light can change, so I can make the player red. So he's coming in with red. So it blends. That's kind of neat. Be cool if I could load that other level. I'll try again. Load demo and it doesn't seem to want to load. Maybe I need to run the whole frame. Let's just make sure. Load doesn't seem to be loading. I wonder if that's an error on my part. So let's look at the code. So we have some groups of objects here. Okay. Palette. It's using the full screen, the ultimate full screen object. It's got the layer object going on in here. And you still can't hear me? Oh, you must be able to hear me. Okay, yeah, you can hear me. All right. Uh, UI help. Okay, this is, what is this object here? Surface object, so it's using the surface object. Hidden objects, what is, uh, how do we unhide hidden objects? Hmm. All right, well, we know that we use the L key to launch the load, so we'll sort by keyboard mouse. Open all the groups, and we'll look for the L key. One of the greatest things that Fusion 2.5 introduced that I cannot believe we actually lived without was search. Man, search is incredible. Uh, but the only problem is searching the L key, and when pretty much everything has L in it. WASD, shift control, L key. Start loop load light, active root group updating. So it is supposed to load an array. Okay, so it is supposed to load that array. So just for giggles, load array from file selector. What if just to circumvent load? Okay, so we got 2D, 3D, light store, and then save load. So we have four different array files. This one must store the data for these. So if we copy this and then deactivate one so we keep it, and then we go insert load array file load array from file, and I'll point directly to the file which should be on the desktop. Dot A R R 
believe it was demo. There it is. And then we'll get rid of the file selector and let's see if that works. Let's see the one to load. Interesting. Is it that I'm missing the other files? Or what if we can peek in the file? I want to debug this. So L was where? Where do we use those events to? Keyboard. Times UI lights. Keys, okay. 250. All right, so line 250. Insert, text, string, drop it there. Change the color to red. Will it show up? Yes. And then 250. We go ahead and grab that piece of data. Insert. Change algebra string. And then we need to do that twice. So plus pipe symbol plus one plus two. So that should output to the string object exactly what we're pulling from this array. So let's see if we're getting anything. So it is trying to do something. Let's increase the size of the string. So you can see more. I'm going to put it on the top layer. All right, so it is trying to pull the demo.2D. But something else isn't running. Activate group update. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, let's see what the other frame does. Nothing. Array. Initiate. At path.demo. So maybe I have uh, corrupt files. That's the only thing I can think of. Hmm. Pathfinding. So I'm assuming the pathfinding is loading the pathfinding array. Yep. So I'm assuming I'm missing something out of my version. Go into the file. Should have all the files. That's what the pathfinding is supposed to look like. So we'll have to get with Solar and find out exactly what I'm doing wrong. But I've seen him use it and it looks pretty amazing. Okay, cool. So the other thing we were working on last week was the Space Wars demo. And uh, I got as far as getting a title screen going. I changed the palette up a little bit. I was going to add this cool sample that I found. Let's get that added. That should be good. And then, so we have a title screen now, which is now seems to be crashing. Oh, well, there you go. That we'll work with. And I put on the CRT effect. And then this was where we left off last week. We had two ships. And we were working on the AI. So we have go towards, 
go away, which isn't working because it's missed our angle. Go towards. So we need to increase that range for the go away, which would be right here. So we're going to go ahead and make that plus 20. Maybe minus 20, and let's see if that catches. That is, doesn't matter which angle we're going. Great. So, towards, away, and let's get our ship moving. And he's endlessly spinning again. Interesting. Riddled with bugs. I'm riddled with bugs. Well, we can increase the range and see if it even, if it's just coded poorly. So this event is supposed to stop the rotation as long as the angle of the ship is now between the two directions to rotate. <clears throat> so rotate once, rotate twice, rotate again, rotate again, rotate again. All right, move the ship. All right, that seems to be working. And then we did thrust. So that's where we left off, was working on the thrust. So the idea was is to create kind of an AI, if you will, a basic one, where we would insert into this list object here different commands, including thrust, that would be randomly picked to give the character, the NPC, a little life. So we have that here. We would uh, we're currently engaging it with the space bar, randomly picking one of those commands, and you can see there are the commands, and this is the output of what we're doing for commands. So there's a kind of a rotating towards, and then thrusting, and it's now thrusting towards me. Go away, go towards, go away, thrust away. Now the problem is, is I'm not getting the vector thrust working right, so. It's now actually moving though, so we've got that going for us. One thing I will do is, well, we'll leave it like that for now. Next thing we need to do is shoot stuff. So we need to grab a new active. And we'll go ahead and using the same color scheme that we were working with, Maybe make it a little, a little more lighter. Okay. And then we'll create our bullet. Nothing too fancy. There we go. Bullet. Shrink that down. Let's make sure the hotspot matches up to the center. Wonderful. And we'll name it Friendly Bullet. We could animate it real easy. Just pick so, center, go back here, pick that color, put it on the border. don't want the bullets created at start so we'll uncheck that and then we'll add our basic ship controls insert new event joystick read joystick state now the read joystick state works for a joy pad but you probably use a different object for that but it also works in for whatever you have set the keyboard commands to 
I believe it defaults to control. So here we go, effect. I'm sorry. Just use the old launch an object. And in direction of the ship. Let's see if that works. There we go. But it's not shooting, is it, in the correct direction? It's always shooting down. So we need to figure out why that is. Launch in the direction. We should use the direction of player ship. So that was just me being a goof. All right. Now, notice that the bullet hasn't rotated, so that's easy fix. We just go to always, direction. I believe we want to go to scale and angle, set angle. And then we want to get the direction of the bullet, which is under animation. And then we multiplied that by 11.25. Maximum quality. And if we did it right, there we go. We're shooting bullets. Pew pew. We may want to, every time we shoot it, to put it underneath the ship. So just click bring it back. And I believe that will get us done there. Cool. Now we need a sound effect. So because I'm cheap. I'm going to go here and go to the old chip tone. Great tool for getting some arcade sound effects. And we'll just uh, go with zap. I think I like that previous one. So let's undo and then maybe a higher pitch. Yes. Save wave, shooting friendly. Okay, and then under the sound, play sample, browse from desktop, and it was shooting from a friendly. There it is. Select it, and now. Excellent. The one thing I noticed, my stars aren't being created, so we can figure out what's going on there. They were being made before. Stars. Visible at start. Well, debugger says they're being made. 45 objects. I run it 50 times, so there should actually be more than that. So, just to test to make sure there's no interference, deactivate all the code, run it. Still no stars. Interesting. Move these off screen for now. Creating it layer one. Use a sound cue. Sound cue didn't didn't trigger. Interesting. So the start of frame doesn't seem to be running for some reason. Well, that's weird. Try only one event. Very weird. So we'll go here, keyboard upon pressing the key, space, jump to game. Still no stars. Very weird. Hmm. Using my debug object, I'm going to add a line. I'm going to say event line three. So we'll know that's executed. And then here we'll say add a line 
creating a star. And then I'll put my debug object back in view and run it. So it does say it's creating a star. And of course it triggers event line three after. And the only reason that happened is because the way Fusion works, of course, is when I call the loop, it pauses the main loop of the game and it goes to wherever the sub loop is. So here it's uh, one loop, uh, make dim stars. So it executes this 50 times and then it resumes. So that's why when we run it, you actually get the event line three showing that that line triggered after the fact. You can fix that by doing it like that. And then you'll see it creates event line three where it's supposed to be and then shows that we're creating those 50 stars. Now the question is, where are the 50 stars? And stars. I changed the color of these earlier, so that's odd. Let's do that, see if that helps. Okay, so it was the color that I had selected. Somehow the white, and maybe I have it set to or, was interfering. Run it again. There's our stars. Okay. Cool. And it looks like my put the rest of my code back on. And run it. All right. Cool. All right. So what do we need to do next? Well, we could probably do a little cleanup. Insert, comment, cleanup. And we'll say if the bullet is outside the screen, then destroy. And then we could put health bars on here. Put these guys about here. Arrange, align objects vertically center, and then arrange a line, horizontal frame in the frame, which will position them nicely. We should make this guy move towards us. So maybe maybe we just change his initial direction to 180. In the movement tab, under the object's properties, but we got to change the angle too. So start a frame, or now one action, I'm going to loops, animation, sorry, scale and angle, set angle, 180. So now he's coming at me, and we got to get out of here. All right, doing good so far. All right, now we need to do some uh, collisions. Insert, new comment, hitting, hitting the enemy. Okay, insert, new event, the old collision event, probably the most used event in all of Fusion. So if my bullet hits the bad guy, then we're going to destroy the bullet and Hmm. And then we need an explosion. That'll work. Hit. Yes, we'll replace it. Looks like I use the word hit all the time. And then here, play sample, hit, and then we're going to need some particles, so we're going to go with an active, we're going to go ahead and remove it, and then we're going to draw out. And then we'll make it a little darker. Then we'll 
cut it down, set our hot spot to the corner there. Good. And we'll give that a bouncing ball movement. And then we'll have insert new event on loop hit enemy go ahead and copy it and then fast loop start loop hit enemy 20 times and then we're going to create on hit loop hit enemy the active relative to the bad guy okay and then we're going to go here and we're going to say if the particle effect flag is off flag zero then we're going to movement set speed to 25 plus random 25 and then we're going to set the angle to the object's direction animation get direction times 11.25 Actually, we don't have to, yeah, we do have to do because it's angle. Again, 32 direction movement, multiply it by 11.25, gets, puts you, converts you to 356. And we'll go maximum speed. And let's just see how that looks real quick. Okay, so the speed doesn't seem to be randomizing. That's because we haven't set the flag back off. So the flag's off, we need to set it on, and that will eliminate this object from uh, continued selection. Okay, close. Now we need to add some deceleration to that movement. So we go up here, select the object. If I can get it to select. Okay, and then deceleration will set to 40. And then I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to say on the always line, I'm going to set the scale to the object's speed divided by 10. And to avoid it being negative, we'll add 1. Let's see what that does for us. This is close to what I want. Problem is, is I'm setting all scale when I should just be setting X scale. So we copy that, we delete it, we reinsert, and we say set X scale. And let's see what that gives us. Plus, we have to go down to our cleanup, and we have to say movement, compare speed to active if it's lower or equal to 1. Then we destroy it so it's not on the screen forever. There you go. I like that. A decent effect. And of course you can manipulate that simply by changing the uh, values here. So I can make the line smaller by dividing by a higher number and we could go into here and we could lower the speeds randomization to say 10 plus random 50 and let's see how that looks different when we change those values not a huge difference but you can see that the little less long All right, now we were automating our commands here. So what we'll do is we'll copy that, we'll put it down here. And instead of on press space bar, we're gonna say X out of Y chances, which we'll say one out of three. And then we'll put a time event on it. Is every 50th of a second. And I'll put that bad boy at the top and then we run it and then the ship, the enemy ship, should start doing some moving. As you can see, it's moving.
now we need him to shoot at us. So let's grab a new active. We're going to name this one Friendly Bullet, so we'll name this one Enemy Bullet. And using the same size reference, we're going to go ahead and give it a different shape. So we're going to go with maybe that. Crop it. Crop it, don't stop it. Now we do have a problem. Is you can see the hotspot isn't centered because we're using an even number. So what we could do is we could lengthen to height 6. Sorry, height 7. And then I could do this. And then copy, paste, drop it in. And now we've got an exact length. Reverse my colors. Use the circle tool again. And I should get with an opposite color and make sure that it's centered. They're both centered. So now we have the enemy bullet. Now, we could to shoot randomly. We could say every 50 seconds. Let's just for giggles do it that way. And we'll say effect launch an object, enemy bullet, and uh, 80 direction of ship. Let's see what that does. Not changing direction, is it? Also, we have a hotspot issue. So the hotspot issue is now oh, it's so it's not the hotspot, it's the action point. So we center that. And we're gonna have to shoot kind of in a different way. Instead of launching an object, we're going to create the object from the NPC ship. Okay, and then we'll give the bullet a movement. Bouncing ball, speed 80. And then on the same line, because we've oh, I've created the wrong object. Create, get out of here. Create an enemy bullet relative to the ship. Hit OK. On the same line, we've identified one bullet. So Fusion selected one bullet. We go ahead and we can go here, direction, select direction, using the expression ed editor. We can then say, give us the ship's angle. We can divide it by 11.25. And if everything works well, we should get shot at, yes. Okay, now it needs to damage us, so I'm going to clone this. Actually, we're going to just clone this. Paste it, hitting the friendly. And we change the bullet. We change the bad guy. I could also click here, and I could do it that way. And then uh, instead of hit enemy, we're going to hit friendly. 20 times. And instead of destroying the friendly bullet, we destroy the enemy bullet. And then instead of creating enemy, the particle effect from the enemy, we're going to create it from us. Cool. And this stays remains the same. So this would be setting hit particle. Setting hit particle, we'll just leave it like that. Okay, and then this needs to be changed to friendly. <coughs> and let's see if that works. This is where you actually get hit, so I'm getting hit.
people are getting hit. That's great. He's randomly moving. And I think that's going to cover for today. Uh, next week we'll add uh, actually line of sight. So when uh, we're getting shot at, that he'll only shoot when we're in his line of sight. Oh, look, he's, he's really moving now. And then we'll add uh, a little better movement and collision between our two ships so they can bump into each other. And then we'll give them life bars and losing and winning conditions. So that's it for today's reactor. I will get with the, uh, oh, look at that. I will get with the author of Isolite and see if he can't uh, do a video stream for us on how to use it. And we'll hopefully post that next week. Appreciate you watching and uh, check out the Weeder Steph Jam and the bundle. Thanks, guys. I'll stay online for a little bit longer if you have any questions.